Your money mindset can either be your greatest obstacle or your greatest advantage when it comes to personal finance. I've met people who the odds were pretty much against them, but because of how they think about money and the relationship they have with money, they've really been able to get ahead. In last week's video, we talked about money personalities and some of the habits you need to avoid or work on based on your personality. So if you haven't already watched that video, I'm going to link it in the description box down below. So as a follow up to last week's video, today I want to talk to you about some of the pointers to be able to identify whether you have like a scarcity money mindset or an abundance mindset. And hopefully you can pick a thing or two that you can work on this year to improve your overall relationship with money and see that financial success that you've been looking for. Thank you for joining me on yet another episode of Finance Friday. My name is Coach Susan. So let's start with some definitions. What exactly is a scarcity mindset? A scarcity mindset is a belief that there's never enough to go around. And people with a scarcity mindset are always worried about not having enough money, opportunities, or resources. An abundance mindset, the definition on the other hand, is when you have an abundance mindset, you're more likely to feel like there's more or there's enough for all of us. And you, because of that, you're able to make very abundant and wise financial decisions because they're not cropping from a place of lack. So let's identify how do I know I have a scarcity mindset or how do I know I have an abundance mindset? So the first sign of a scarcity mindset is you believe in limited resources. Like for you, money stems from a place of fear that it will run out. And that is, um, it, it, it shows up everywhere, not just in your money, but even when you're thinking about opportunities and jobs. Like the immediate thing that comes to your mind is that it, there's not enough. I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to get enough. If someone else gets it, then I can't get it. Like your mindset generally is just about limited resources. There's not enough to go around. That's the first sign. The second sign is comparison and competition. If you find yourself comparing and competing a lot, mostly even in the office place, the workspace, you guys, let me know in the comment section down below. Do you have that one friend or one relative that behaves as if they will die if they share an opportunity with you? So they like it's almost like if they see jobs, they don't they don't tell people about them. Um if they see business opportunities or they're in the same business line, these people will never ever recommend you or even let you know that the opportunity is available because to them, it's all about competition and, and, and actually comparison. And this is a scarcity driven mindset. Another sign is hoarding, guys. Holding, holding, holding. And I am one of those people that I, I, I'm a recovering holder. Yeah. It really stems from a place of scarcity. So you're afraid to spend on yourself, spending on people, or even sharing with people, right? The other thing is that if money to you is generally associated with negative emotions, so we are talking worry, we are talking fear, we are talking discontentment, like generally when you think about money or wealth, it, 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 it makes you feel a certain type of way. As a matter of fact, you will even find yourself kind of like hating rich people or you see people like when people are celebrating their wins, maybe they've gotten a new job, maybe they've bought a new car, maybe they've leveled up their lives. To you, that is almost like they're showing off Wanaringa, who even asked you about that. All those are signs and symptoms of someone with a scarcity mindset. Do you see yourself somewhere there? Let me know. Let me know if you see yourself somewhere there. On the flip side of things, if you have an abundance mindset, this is how you behave or how you generally interact with people or money. Number one, you believe in abundance and opportunities. You literally will hear of a job opportunity or a business opportunity. And in your mind, you're like, who in my circle or who in my family or who can I recommend this to? Or, oh yeah, I know my friend who can do this. Like 
you are the kind of people who even mention people in rooms where they are not there. You really operate from a place of believing that there's enough to go around. Opportunities are there for us. Like, in fact, even when you're thinking about money, to you, it's never about like that. Your first response is not, um, no, I can't afford this or this is so expensive. In fact, most times you find yourself inclining towards trying to find out, okay, fine, this is a bit tricky for me. I'm not so sure how I can afford it, but you know what? I'm going to find a way. That is, that is a good example of someone with an abundance mindset. And then the second thing, you also have a lot of gratitude and contentment. And I'll tell you guys this, and, and this is one of the things I love to tell my clients, myself and the people around me, that if you can learn this one thing, you really will start having a good and a healthy relationship with money. And that's really going to um, come into play in the long term um, on how wealthy you can become and whether you can sustain that wealth. Gratitude and contentment. You see, gratitude and being content is not about I have everything in my life, that everything I've ever desired. It is about focusing on what I do have right now. Listen, guys, all of us, even the richest people or the people we look at and we're like, they're the richest people alive. They all have something that they desire. Like if you never get out of the rat race of always wanting more and always wanting better, you will get to millionaire status and still feel like it's not enough. You get to billionaire status and want to grab more or, or even still. You guys have never wondered why people are billionaires and they're still kind of like doing shady deals and all that. This is an example of someone who has not learned the place of gratitude and contentment in life. I'll give you a good example. Today, as we stand here right now, or as we sit here right now, there's a lot that I, I desire and there's a lot that I want for myself that I do not have a single clue how I will access. And instead of focusing on that, I, I, I prefer to look at it from the perspective of there's a day I used to wear hand-me-downs and now I can afford to buy clothes for myself. There's a day I never used to be able to like afford um, a decent meal with my friends for a night out or a dinner. And now I can do that. You see, the more you start looking at it from the perspective of what do I have right now that I'm grateful for, you condition your mind to be content with what you have. But the moment you never have any form of gratitude about what you have today, and it comes to the very basics of things, that you have clothes, that you have a roof over your head. The fact that you're watching me right now, you're very privileged because you have bundles to do that. Like there are people who live way below the poverty line and that 100 bob that you spent today to buy bundles and just hang around online, on YouTube, on Instagram, that's someone's meal for today. I think when you operate in that mental space, I kid you not, guys, you will, you will actually uh, be more appreciative of what you have and focus less on what you don't have. And that way, you understand? <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll not be looking at people who are celebrating their wins and you hate them for it. Or you think everyone is sleeping with people to get to where they are. Or you think everyone is doing wash wash business. I do recognize that there are people who do that. But guys, you will never attract good things in your life if what you see or what you observe is all the negatives in other people's lives or coveting. And that, that is operating from a place of abundance. Another indication is generosity and giving. Even with little, you'll find that there are people who will literally be like, you have 200 and then you meet someone, they're in trouble, maybe your friend, and you're like, you're happy to give out the 100 or the 50. You operate from a place of giving and generosity. And it's not just coming from a place of you have much. There are people who have so much money that don't give at all. And there are people who don't have a lot of money, but they still give and help out and they are generous. That's an abundance mindset. And then obviously, positive emotions when it comes to money. Like, look at your circle right now. And I'm very curious. Let me know. Are you surrounded by people who are positive about money, the economic situation? Or you, you're surrounded by people who just encourage and make you um, even fuel your anxiety even more? Like today as we speak, if you're in Kenya, we have one million problems. There's taxes. There's the cost of living. There's inflation. And <laughs> there's investments. We don't even know that our money is safe anymore. Like there's so many things to worry about. 
But then you see, if you're surrounded by people whose talk about money is all about doom and destruction, like you'll even be afraid to invest. I know people right now who are just holding their money because everyone is talking about all the bad things that will happen to our investments. But then I've also met people who are not bothered at all. They are not worried. They've understood how the market works, how recessions work. The people around them are also not panicky right and because of that listen you absorb that like the people around you the five people closest to you that's who you are so if you surround yourself with people who are negative about money all we do is complain or rather all they do is complain about money the government hakuna pesa and all that that's ideally the kind of reality you are you will allow yourself to live in i talked about this in a previous video and i told you guys that one of the things that helped me come out of poverty is to surround myself with people who are ideally not in my situation. It is to it was to sit in tables where I didn't even deserve to sit at or a table where I didn't even fit in. Because of that, I started hearing things. People talking a particular way, people thinking a particular way. And that really influenced me from, you know, moving from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. And and let me just joke in a minute. I mean, if you're Kenyan, I'm, I'm just going to say this in Swahili. Um, I hear people saying this time and time again, and I've come to believe it's true. Wewe semando hauna pesa ukiwa peke yako. Watu kunja wako na pesa. Askeza complain about the economy. Someone is flying first class here in Kenya. So change your mindset. So guys, these are the pointers of an abundance mindset. So I just want to take maybe the last minutes of this video and talk to you about how can you, if you've discovered that you have signs of a, a scarcity mindset, how can you kind of like slowly start shifting and experiencing that paradigm shift where you move from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset? So here is what you can do. Number one, identify your limiting beliefs and challenge them. What are some of the things you think about money? What are some of the things that you feel are holding you back? Like, why do you think money is hard to make? Why do you believe there are no jobs in Kenya? Why do you believe you cannot make money in your business or your degree? Why? Challenge what you think about money. Once you know what your limiting beliefs are, you see, one of the things that we are struggling with is that we don't even know the way we think about money, the way we talk about money, the way we talk about people who we think have money. All that are things that, first of all, you have to really call yourself out. Ch take yourself out of that crowd of people a, a particular way and and kind of like um pull yourself out of this crowd and out of this situation and, and ask yourself by the way what are what is my mindset around money what do i think about money and challenge why do i think about money this way is it because of how i was brought up being told that money is scarce money does not grow on trees maybe you watched your parents squander money maybe they've been in loans First of all, identify why you relate to money the way you do and why you think about money and then challenge that. Is it a fact really that there's no money? Is it a fact really that as a business owner, I can't budget? Is it a fact really that as a freelancer who earns a irregular income, I can't get a handle on my finances? Is it a fact? So challenge the way you think about money. Okay. Number two. Focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. And I love to challenge people to think about this. What do you have in your hands right now? Fine. You don't have a job, but what do you have in your hands right now? You're not getting paid the best kind of money, but what do you have in your hands right now? Right? You, you, your parents are not a trust fund kind of parents. They didn't leave you an inheritance. But what do you have in your hands right now? Some of us have time. You have so much time. What are you doing with it? Are you Netflixing? Are you spending eight hours on Instagram, on, um, you know, TikTok? Like, what are you doing with your time? Time is money. You may not have money right now, but like you could use the time that you have, this idle time that you have right now to acquire demand-driven skills, to learn. Do you know, guys, I mean, I'm, and I know I've shared this before. When I lost my job and COVID started, like I was pretty much idle and there was nowhere to go. Instead of kind of like uh, spending all my time online, I decided to be a creator instead of a consumer. And that's how my business was born. Instead of being online and complaining and panicking and just kind of like doing nothing with my time, I decided to, you know, every Friday make some of these videos on Instagram, talk to people about what money market funds are. I had 
in my hands, I didn't have a job. I didn't have money, but I had head knowledge and I had time. I did something with that. So think about what you can achieve for yourself in the future. What are your goals? What would you want your money to do for you? And start planning from there. So instead of complaining about the government and, and about the economy, ask yourself. And I remember I told you guys, this is this is this is reality in your head. It's not it's not what's truly happening. Some of these conversations, you first of all have to change them from inside of your mind. Okay? So Yes, I know it's difficult and especially if you've already um, if you've already gotten so used to complaining. A complaining mind, a complaining mouth and a complaining heart is very different to kind of like shift. And trust me, look around and, and, and look at the people who are really able to pull their minds out of that place of complaining, comparison and, and excuses and blaming everyone but themselves. Those are the people who truly make it. So focus on what you can do not what you cannot do. And then finally, realize that money is not a challenge or an issue just for you. We are all struggling with it. Stop personalizing your feelings. Stop personalizing this particular situation that you are in and open your mind. Talk to people. Talk to coaches like myself. Talk to your friends. Instead of um, being envious of their lives, I always challenge people. Every time you find yourself being so bothered by someone, you know, most of us, uh, the people you find yourself feeling very envious of or jealous, instead of just kind of like staying behind the scenes and, and trying to figure out what they do for money, maybe approach that person and ask them, you know, what do you do for money? How are you making money? You see, most of us are broke people trying to impress other broke people. And you don't want people to think you're broke. So you're not asking about job opportunities. You're not asking, hey, by the way, what are you doing for money? Especially like in a safe space around your family or around your friends. Please ask people. Talk to people. Ask people what they're doing for money. Ask people how they're investing their money. Ask people how they got out of debt. There's always something that someone can teach you or that can help you with that you didn't know. Whether that person is older, richer, poorer, um, younger than you. If you have a heart of learning and if you have an open mind, there's always going to be something that someone can teach you that you don't know. So be open to hearing different perspectives. And if you keep practicing these things, you'll find yourself slowly moving from that place of scarcity, that place of bitterness, that place of negative emotions when it comes to money. And you'll start moving towards where your mind automatically thinks it's possible to make money. It's possible to budget. It's possible for your business to grow in the next one year, two years. It's possible for you to literally start from scratch and be somewhere in less than five years from now. Your mind will move from scarcity and start moving towards abundance. It's a mindset thing. So as long as you, you discover that the, 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 the issue is up in here, it's not, it's not out here mostly. You can have all the conditions that are ripe for you to succeed in, but as long as you've not seen that in your mind first, it's, it's impossible. And guys, I know this sounds very woo-woo, but trust me, if you've um, practiced a mindset change in any area of your life, please let us know in the comment section down below whether the mindset shift has been impactful in you seeing results in that area. Because for me, finances, like everything was against me from upbringing to the schools I went to, to the cards that were dealt uh, at me when I graduated, I graduated, I lost my job and all that. Like there were so many things that worked against me in the, like literally physically or looking at things. But like, I think the fact that my mindset has always been very resilient and um, I've been working on being more positive and speaking life instead of always complaining and then being very proactive with what I'm doing with my mind and what I'm doing with my time. I feel like majority of the success I've had has really just originated from working on my mindset. So I really hope that this video was helpful to you, that it has challenged you to examine how you think about money and most importantly, how you talk about money. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. So think differently and therefore you'll act differently. And when you act differently, the results are going to be different. So let me know if you've enjoyed this video, to, if it has made sense to you. Um, and also share this video with your friends so that we can learn together. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of Finance Friday.